Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make a simple vanilla cake and this is what it looks like. What we have is four layers of this really moist and dense vanilla flavored cake and then we're going to fill it and frost it with this really delicious cream cheese frosting. So the first thing you need to do is to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 180 degrees Celsius. And then you will need two nine inch round, whoops, pans by, and then you want a depth of two inches. So that's 23 by five centimeters. And then what we want to do is you can either butter your pans or spray them with one of those nonstick sprays, or really you could just uh, uh, brush them with a like a light flavorless oil. But I'm going to use butter, and I just melted a little bit of butter, and then I'm using a pastry brush just to um, brush the bottom and then the sides because we don't want our cake to stick to the pan. And then to make extra sure that our cake does not stick to the bottom of the pan, I'm going to put a round of parchment paper in there. I have an extra measure to make sure it doesn't stick. Okay, so um, if you have an electric stand mixer like I have here, use your paddle attachment, or really you could use a hand mixer for this. This is, like I said, a simple chocolate cake, and by that, I mean, we're not making a butter cake here. We're making a cake that uses oil, which uh, is, the fat is in liquid form. So the first thing you will need is four large eggs and have them at room temperature because they whip up way better when they're at room temperature. Let's put those in there. And then you will need two cups, 400 grams of granulated white sugar. Now I'm going to um, actually flavor my sugar with some lemon zest because you know with with using oil sometimes the cake doesn't have as much flavor as when you use butter so I, I find a little bit of lemon zest just kind of uh, helps so uh, have your lemon always wash it if you can buy organic and then I'm using like a microplane to grate you could use you know a box grater and you want to make sure when you're grating that you just do the outside yellow part, not that white underneath because that's quite bitter. We don't want that. Now, if you don't want to, um, I mean, you don't absolutely have to flavor your cake with lemon or you, you could leave that out altogether or you could use orange. I've done that. Or I guess you could even use lime. Looks good. These microplanes are handy little tools. And then let's put it in there. Now what I'm going to do is mix it in the sugar. I'm just using the fork. And the reason I'm doing that, one, if you noticed, when I grate, it kind of clumps the lemon zest. And if you put it in the sugar, it kind of un unclumps it. I don't know whether that's a word. But anyways, and plus, you know, the um, sugar will absorb the moisture, and so the, it flavors the sugar at the same time, so kind of, which is good. You get a nice lemon flavor to our cake. So that looks good. I'm just going to put that in there along with, we're going to, as I said, it's a vanilla cake. I'm going to add one and a half teaspoons, six grams of pure vanilla extract. Now I'm just going to beat this medium high speed for about one minute, just about that, just to, until it's like a little thick. So medium high speed. Okay, so as you can see, it's kind of a little thick. So that's what we're looking for. And now, so in a separate bowl, I have three cups, which is 390 grams of just an all-purpose flour. You may know that as a plain flour. And to that, I'm going to add two and a half teaspoons, 10 grams of baking powder, and then about a half a teaspoon, um, two grams of salt. 
I'm using a kosher salt. It's You could use a table salt or even a light sea salt. I find a kosher salt has a milder flavor than like a regular table salt, but like I said, whatever you have in your house. Then I'm just whisking this. You could sift your ingredients. But a, like a whisk does just as good, or a fork even. Okay, so we have our dry ingredients. Now, what we're gonna do is add this in three additions, and then I'm gonna alternate that with our wet ingredients. Now, so you will need two thirds of a cup, which is 160 milliliters of milk. I'm using a whole milk, full fat milk, have it at room temperature. And then I'm using a two thirds of a cup, 160 milliliters of oil. Now, personally, I like to use a light extra virgin olive oil. I find um, that adds a really nice flavor to the cake. Now, if you don't want to use that, you could use like a flavorless canola or corn or vegetable or even a safflower oil. But like I said, a, you know, my, the jar that I, or the uh, bottle I use, it said mild and buttery flavor to my extra virgin olive oil. And I find it really adds a nice flavor to my cake. So if you want to do that. So now I'm just going to add about a third of my flour mixture. And I'm just going to beat that in. Okay. And then when you're doing that, make sure you start on low speed. You don't want the flour coming up in your face. So then I'm going to add about half of the amount of my milk. I'm just eyeballing. And then half of my olive oil. Just beat that in. A little more of flour. rest of my wet ingredients. It's pretty simple here. Really what we're doing is just beating it in. That's all you got to do at this point. And I'm just going to give that a scrape down because flour is gathering around the sides. As always, you know, scrape the sides and bottom of your uh, mixing bowl as much as you need to make sure all your ingredients are mixed together. And then just the final amount of flour. Get all of that. And we're done. I think actually I named it a simple vanilla cake because I think that's pretty simple to make. It's not a lot of technique in this type of cake, which is good, especially if you're just new to baking. So now give that a quick stir just to make sure. As you can see, it's nice and thick. You want to make sure it's nice and smooth. You don't want any lumps of flour. Okay, so now we're going to divide it evenly uh, between our pans. You can eyeball it, uh, you know, or if you have a scale, which I recommend, <laughs> um, then I can weigh it, which I'll be exact here. So I'm going to divide it evenly. good because I've done this before that's why I know exactly how much batter I need in each pan may take you a little more juggling to figure that out but so now just kind of 
you want the batter to be even out. And then I just like to, you know, bang, get any air bubbles. So now we're going to bake them. Try to keep your pans in your oven like a little bit of air. You want the air to be able to circulate around your both pans. And I find somewhere between 25, 30 minutes. Again, when you, um, they'll get, they'll get some color to them. When you press the top, it'll spring back. It will, you can start to see it's, just slightly start to pull away from the sides of the pan and of course a toothpick insert into the center will just come out clean so 25 30 minutes depending on your oven because everyone's is a little different simple vanilla cakes are done. So put them on a wire rack to cool. Now I like to, to uh, let them cool in the pans on a wire rack for about 10 minutes just so they firm up a little. And then I will show you how to take them out of the pans. Now what I'm going to do now is, is to show you how to make a soaking syrup. Now if you new to baking, um, a soaking syrup is used especially by professionals to keep their cakes moist. So if, if you're gonna make this cake and serve it today, you probably don't need a soaking syrup. But if you want it to last, because cakes tend to dry out after a few days. So if you put a brush the cake layers with this really, just a, a light brushing of soaking syrup, what it does is it kind of soaks into the cake and keeps it fresh. So I find like doing it with this cake, four, five days in the fridge at least before it starts to dry out, which is a good thing. So um, what we need to do, it's really simple to make, and you can do this ahead of time. Actually, you know, this can be stored in the fridge a couple weeks. So um, you will need, I'm just making a small amount, so uh, half a cup, 120 milliliters of just, you know, tap water. And then I'm using a quarter of a cup 50, uh, quarter of a cup, 50 grams of granulated white sugar. Soaking syrup can be different densities. Some people use one part water to one part sugar. I'm not doing that because I don't want too sweet. So I'm using one part water, no, like two parts water to one part sugar. So I'm just going to stir the and bring it up to a boil. You wanna make sh sure the uh, sugar has dissolved. So just give it a stir. Okay, so we're up to a boil, take it off to the heat, let it, you, we, we want it to cool completely before we use it to brush the layers. I like to add a little bit of flavoring, so I'm adding about a half a tablespoon of Grand Marnier. If you didn't want to use, you could use another type of alcohol, or you could even use just a little bit, you know, maybe a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. So I'm just going to put that aside to cool, and when we come back, I'll show you how to take the cakes out of the pan. So now we're ready to take the cake out of the pan. So take an offset spatula or knife and just run it all the way around the inside. Make sure it's not sticking. And then take a wire rack, top, flip it, and go. And then just peel off your parchment paper, like so. And then we're going to Flip it so it's right side up onto a wire rack like that. So they're still a little warm. I'm going to let them cool completely, and when we come back, we will assemble our cake. So now we're going to make our cream cheese frosting. So if, again, if you're using a stand mixer, use your paddle attachment, and you will need 8 ounces, which is 225 grams of cream cheese, full-fat cream cheese. Have it at room temperature. And then I'm going to add a little something different, eight ounces, uh, 225 grams of mascarpone cheese, which is an Italian cheese, uh, cream cheese. It's very mild, it's very buttery, and it's very good. Um, you can, I find that I, if you live in the States, you can typically find it in the deli section of your grocery store or specialty food stores, or 
Now, if you can't find it, or sometimes it can be very expensive, just use another, instead of this, use another eight ounces, 225 grams of cream cheese. Frosting will still be really good. So, got a couple options there, because I know this can be a little, I find some places are reasonable and some, it's pretty expensive. So, it's an option. And then you will need for flavoring uh, one teaspoon, four grams of uh, pure vanilla extract. And then I'm just going to beat these together until we get it nice and creamy and smooth. Yeah, it looks pretty good. If it's that, your cream cheese, you know, can tend to have lumps, so it's better to have it at room temperature when you beat it. It smooths out a lot easier, faster. And now for, um, we need to sweeten it. So I'm going to add one cup, 115 grams of confectioner sugar. You may know that as powdered or icing sugar. And as you can see, I am sifting it because it tends to, you know, have lumps, so. And we don't want that, a nice smooth frosting. So now what I'm gonna do is beat that together and then beat it for like a couple minutes at medium, medium high speed to get a little bit of air in there. Start it on slow speed though. So we got everything mixed together. It's wonderfully creamy and smooth. And you know, you beat it a bit, it gets a little lighter in texture, which is what we want. So now we are going to, I'm just going to transfer this to another bowl because this is kind of, I mean, this is a great frosting just as it is, but we are going to make it even better because we're going to add whipped cream. If you've ever made the red velvet cake on the Joy Baking website, you, this frosting recipe will be familiar because it is the same frosting as I use for the red velvet cake. And it is delicious. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna use the same bowl so I don't dirty another bowl or I don't have to wash it. Um, I'm going to beat my cream. You will need one and a quarter cups 300 grams of cold heavy cream, also known as heavy whipping cream, and that's cream with a 35 to 40% butterfat content. And what, by that I mean when you whip it, it will, if you whip it enough, it'll reach stiff peaks. So now I'm going to whip this not to, I don't really want really like stiff peaks. I want it just still a little soft because I am going to fold it into my cream cheese mixture. Okay, let's check that. Like I said, be very careful. You don't want to over whip it. It's better to under whip it and then you can just whip it a little by hand. But if you do ever over whip it, just add a little more heavy cream and whip it a little more by hand and thin it out. So what I'm looking for, like that's good. See, it's not, it's not like really stiff. Because then it's so, if it's too stiff, it's too hard to mix it in here. So what I'm going to do is just add some. And you don't have to, you can whip your cream with a wire whisk, which I normally do, but today I use a machine, feeling a little lazy. <laughs> so just kind of add a bit to lighten it, and then we're just gonna whisk it, because we want a nice smooth frosting. This is so decadent and it's so good. <laughs> Real, you know, special occasion cake warrants a special frosting. So, and then just fold it in.
I mean, you could do this with your in your machine, but you got a nice big bowl. Give her arm a little bit of a workout. So this is our frosting. Now, if you made this, you wanted to make it, you know, a little ahead of time, you could just cover it and refrigerate it. And then, you know, you might have to whisk it a little bit. So there, we're kind of getting it nice. Get nice and smooth. Give it a quick whisk. Yeah, that looks good. So now, I'm just going to clean up here and set up. And when we come back, we are going to assemble our cake. So now we're going to assemble our cake. First, we got to cut our um, cake layers in half horizontally. So if you have one of these fancy cake turntables, this is the time to use it. If not, you can just put it right on the counter. So what I got is a nice long knife. I find that's the best. And then, I'll put my glasses on. And then you want to take your knife and put it like in the center and then, you want to cut in, I have my hand on the top, and just kind of move your cake, your knife, kind of turn it, and then cut. Try to do halfway, and then just work your way all the way around till you, your cut meets up. And then, then you start moving your knife, as you can see, through the cake to cut it in half, like so. You can always watch this part a couple times on video and then as you see kind of it's cut in half really nice and straight so that's how you do it so now what we're going to do i'm just going to get this if you got one of these big flat spatulas it's nice so what i do we, we're going to i'm going to do it right on my turntable here i do like to put because there is a tendency for your cake to slide. So I put a little bit of frosting just to hold it in place. And if you have one of these fancy, like a, one of these, it's called a cake circle. It's just cardboard. It's kind of nice to, to use that, but you don't have to. So what we're going to do, is I'm, I'll just put that right there. And then I'm going to take one of my cake layers, the top one, and I'm going to put the top like upside down. So the cut side is up. That way we're going to have a really flat top to our cake. And then, remember that soaking syrup? That's what we're going to use here. So um, don't get too carried away with your soaking syrup. Take a pastry brush and lightly brush. I find, um, you know, a couple, maybe a couple of tablespoons, if that. I just do a really light coating. Like I said, it really you can use this for any of your cakes, butter cakes, whatever, just to keep them nice and fresh. And it adds a little bit of flavor because I used a little Grand Marnier in there. Keep it moist and flavorful. Okay, so there. And now we want to, um, oh, it's in here. It's looking for my spatula. So now we're just going to put... I don't like, this is a rich frosting, so I, I just like a thin layer. So, and take, this is, you could use a spoon for, or a knife. These offset spatulas are very nice. And spread it out, nice thin layer. Doesn't matter if you go to the edge or not because we are going to cover the whole cake. Now, if you wanted to, you could put a layer, you could have put a layer of jam or something. I'm just going to do frosting and cake today, but you know, if you wanted to use a little jam, you could do that on the layers. Okay, that's, that looks good. So now what I'm gonna do, put that, and then I'm going to brush Again, my inside of the cake layer with some more soaking syrup. Okay, that looks good. And then I'm going to put that. Kind of try to even it up. And then more frosting. Uh, 
then you're just going to keep doing this <laughs> layer after layer. Okay. And now, again, top side down. that top layer okay try to have it as even as you can okay and now we will frost the top and the sides so I just like a thin coating. Like I said, a rich, I don't, um, doesn't have to be too thick, just enough to cover the sides and the top. So just put that, I put on the top there. Okay, so. And now, now you can use a really large spatula, I just like my little one. And then what we're going to do, I'm just going to move this over. We're going to work our way by just taking from the top and then working our way down the sides. You can see that, kind of back and forth. We'll neaten it up later, just get that first just get the cake all covered with the frosting and then we'll smooth it all out later. Okay, so now I kind of got it roughly done. So now we'll fix it all up here. So I just kind of take your spatula and kind of smooth it out and then on your sides, I kind of have the, my spatula at a bit of an angle and then just kind of turn my turntable to get... I like it nice, just a real smooth layer. Of course, you can, you know, have fun with it and kind of do it however you want. But this is my preference. So I'm just going to keep running it around until I get a of a nice even layer. As you can see, we're not having gobs of frosting on this cake. It's just enough to, to fill and to frost because this is a rich frosting. And personally, I like a kind of equal amounts cake and frosting. So that's why I don't have a, you know, a lot gobs of frosting here. And I'm not going to pipe any like into rosettes or anything like that. I'm just going to leave it very, very simple because we're calling this simple vanilla cake. So see, if you can see, I just have it on an angle and I'm just smoothing it out as I go around. Like I said, if you wanted to, you could kind of do some decorative like, you know, straight up or I'm just going to give you the basic what I like and you can do it however you want at home. So I, that looks pretty good. I could fuss all day, but we won't. You can see? There, and then the top, smooth that out. And we're good. I think we're good to go here. I'm happy with that. Beautiful. Just a like kind of a uh, classic looking cake. Now, if you have a um, nice um, cake stand, what I do is take my, see if I can do this, and I get under that, that cake circle, and then gently <laughs> put it like, see that cake, having that cardboard cake circle underneath this does help. And then what you can do at this point is kind of, um, wait my hands here, play with the bottom if it got a little um, 
ragged, which I should do, but I, for time I won't. Now, this, if it was a birthday cake, I'd just stick some candles in it. You could do um, sprinkles or stuff like that. My, my favorite way is just fresh fruit. I just pile it up like that and put some raspberries. I think it's classic looking. It it's, brightens it up like so. So there we have it. Now this cake does need to be refrigerated. Uh, my personal preference is not to cut into it when I right, do it. I like it to just firm up for a couple hours in the refrigerator, but I will cut it so you can see. So let's take your knife. Let's move the fruit out of the way. Nice sharp knife, straight down. And then I do wipe off in between. And you know, this is a rich cake, so typically I do serve it in um, small pieces. So you're talking, you know, at least 12 people, I think. I think you'd go up to maybe 16 people for this cake. A little goes a long way. And there you have it. Isn't that gorgeous? The kind of almost a yellow tinge to the cake with the white frosting. I think very, very nice looking cake here. And I'll dry a bit. Oh. That's very nice. Moist cake, little, little bit of a lemon flavor. And then, of course, that cream cheese frosting. Decadent. Delicious. So try this cake. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com.